Hello, my name is Lisa Massimiano. I'm a licensed esthetician and I'm the owner of Skin Smart Salon at 44 Front Street in Ashland. And as an esthetician, I do a variety of treatments. I do facial treatments, I do waxing, hair removal, but I also work a lot with makeup. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. I've got two clients of mine who have um, generously agreed to come today and be my models. And we're going to do some demonstrations on them, how to apply makeup, color suggestions, tools that are important to have in your makeup kit to get the best application. I'm also going to work primarily with mineral makeup. That's the makeup that I prefer to use. I personally use it and I also use it in my salon. The reason why I like mineral makeup is for a few, th few things. Uh, first of all, it's very easy to work with. It is mineral, so it's primarily made out of zinc, which means it's very soothing on the skin. So any skin type can use it from a sensitive to an acneic skin and get a great result. It feels not, you're, not like, you're, like you're not wearing any makeup at all, yet it gives you very good coverage. So the first person joining me today is Roseanne Massaro, and Roseanne lives in Ashland, and she's going to have her makeup done by me today. Now Roseanne has beautiful skin, she takes good care of her skin, and I have to say one thing about when you're doing a makeup application, if you take good care of your skin and you prepare the skin before putting the makeup on, you're going to get a much better result. So you always want to start with the skin that's hydrated and prepared for the makeup. Now I'm actually going to start with Roseanne as I'm going to put a makeup primer on her face first. And by using a makeup primer, it helps to even out the pores, smooth the skin with more of a silicone base so the makeup just glides over the top. So I'm going to start with that. This product happens to be called Liquid Gold. And it's a wonderful product. It glides on the skin, seals in the moisture, and also puts a silicone finish on the skin so the makeup just glides right over the top. I think one of the things people often have a lot of trouble with with makeup is choosing a color for their foundation. One thing about foundation is that you don't need to change the natural color of your skin. The purpose of foundation is not to make your skin look darker. That's what bronzer's for. What foundation is, is simply to even out skin tone and imperfections in the skin. So you want to match it as close as you can to your natural skin tone. As we get older, we get some imperfections in our skin, broken capillaries, blotchiness, sun damage, and those are the type of things you want to detract from when you're putting on a foundation to kind of even out the skin tone. Now Roseanne has somewhat of an olive skin, so she's more of a medium skin tone. So when you're matching a foundation color to your skin, not only do you want to go light or dark, but you want to try to find the same undertone. And generally they come in two types. It's either a, a red undertone or a pink undertone or more of a yellow undertone. So your skin type should match both ways and that way you're going to get the most exact match to your skin. So on Roseanne, she's more of a yellow undertone. So I'm actually going to use a makeup that's got more of a yellow undertone and a beige color, which is close to what she is. Now with mineral makeup, it looks like powder, but in actuality it really isn't. Powder has talc in it. This has no talc. This is just crushed minerals. And because they're crushed minerals and you put them on the skin, they don't set, the powder does not settle into the pores, but actually is light reflective. It reflects the light back, so it gives a nice luminous glow to the skin. So when using mineral makeup, you need to sprinkle some out. And then you need a brush that has a rounded dome so that it holds the product onto the brush. This is actually called the Kabuki brush, and there's different sizes. This is a smaller one. So I am going to start by filling my brush with the makeup. And because this is a sheer makeup, it allows you to layer where you need more coverage. So it's filled with product. And I'm going to start by doing a quadrant at the face at time. So I'm just going to simply brush the makeup onto her skin. And remember, it should blend with her skin. So there should be no line where the makeup ends and the neck begins. So what you want to do is you want to go for a close a match as you can to your own skin color. And that's going to give you a very natural look. So you're going to look like you with a little, a little bit more polished. So you can go back and add a little bit more coverage where you need it. Roseanne has pretty even skin. She has a little redness across her cheeks. 
and look down her nose. So I'm going to take a slightly smaller brush and I'm just going to go back over the areas that I want to add a little bit more coverage to for her. And this allows me to get into the smaller areas around the nose, under the eyes, anywhere that needs a little bit more coverage. Now you can also use concealer. Concealer can be used before or after the foundation. It doesn't really matter. This is actually a mineral-based concealer that I'm going to use on Roseanne. And concealer comes in different types. This one happens to be more of a liquid concealer, so it's sheer. It also has brightening properties to it, so it's light reflective. Whenever you do something light reflective, it's going to bring out darkness out of the skin and emphasis to kind of make the skin come forward, which means it's going to lighten up the area. I'm actually going to use a peach on her. This peach does a great job of neutralizing out darkness under the eyes. When you're working with any kind of a liquid type of a makeup like this, you want to make sure that you have a brush that has a stiff nylon bristle. And this allows you to push the product into the skin. Okay. Okay, now I generally like to do makeup from the top down. So once the foundation is on, you've basically evened out the skin, have a nice canvas to start to lay your color on. So for Roseanne, I'm going to start with her eyes and then work my way down. Now I like to put a little lid primer on first. Um, this does two things. First of all, it helps to neutralize any discoloration in the eye so the makeup color goes on true. Secondly, it allows the makeup to adhere better and last throughout the day. So if you want your makeup to stay, by using a base like this, it's going to help it last throughout the day. I like to start by putting it on the back of my hand. It acts as a palette. It also, my body heat tends to soften it up a little bit. Let's close, please. This is actually a primer that's specifically made for the eyes. It has peptides in it, and it does not crease or dry. Sometimes when you put a regular concealer on the eye area, it can be a little bit too drying. So this nicely neutralizes out her lid. It puts a base down for the, for the makeup to adhere to. Okay, so now she's prepped. So next comes color. And one of the most difficult challenges people have is they think, I don't know what color to use on my eyes. Um, there are really no hard and fast rules with makeup, but some general guidelines. For example, if you have brown eyes, dark color eyes, if you use contrasting colors, it's going to make your eyes pop. For example, uh, brown eyes look great with grays, uh, greens. Uh, anything that's a contrasting color is going to make your eyes really stand out. So for Roseanne, she has dark brown eyes and she has, also has dark hair. So she's a little bit more of a cool tone on her hair and her eyes. So I'm going to do a makeup palette that's a little bit more of a cool tone as opposed to a warm tone on her. And I'm going to start off with using a nice shade of a pale pink to just kind of highlight her eyes. If you're using multiple colors, you always want to start the lightest color first. And with one thing with eye makeup is you can be very simple. You can do one color and that's it or you can add layers of color. And every time you add a layer, you're adding more contour to the eye and more definition. So I'm going to start off with a nice soft pink on Roseanne. And when you're working with mineral makeup, you want to stipple the color on, not necessarily draw the brush across, but stipple it like you were stippling paint on a wall. And this allows the product to set into the skin and adhere to the lid. So I'm going to put that all over from the base of her lashes all the way up into her brow, especially into the corner. Okay. 
Eye makeups can be either matte, which is to have a, uh, a finish that is not um, luminescent, or they can be more of a luminescent finish. This has a little bit of a luminosity to it, so it gives some glow and light reflection back. Just open your eyes for me, please. So anytime you want something to kind of lighten up, come forward, you want to use a lighter color or something that's more luminescent. Something that you want to diminish, you want to go a little darker in a matte shade, and that's going to make it recede, because that's how your eye perceives light and dark. Anything that's bright or reflective comes forward, anything that's darker matte goes back. So we're going to do her in a nice light eye right now to start off with. I'm going to add a second color on Roseanne, and this is going to be a medium tone, kind of a brown pink. <clears throat> I'm going to have you close. When you're doing eye, there are different ways you can do eye shapes, but basically a simple way to think of it is if you're doing, you want to do your color, light color first, and then a medium color is going to go on the lid. I'm going to do this across her lid, along her lash line, up into her crease. Generally speaking, you want to keep more of the color to the outer part of the eye as opposed to the inner part of the eye. Because you want the eyes to look wide open. So by keeping the darker colors to the outside, it's going to create that more of an open look on the eye. Let's this way from you for a second. Now I'm going to go one step further, and I'm going to go a little bit darker. And I'm going to get, add her, give some contour to her eyes. This is kind of a brownish pink, or should I say pink is brown. Now on this, I'm going to keep it more in a V, so I'm going to accent the outer corner of her eye, bring it up a little bit onto her brow bone, and draw it a little bit down around the outer corner. And what this does is it creates a contour on the eye, which gives it more definition. Now all these colors I'm putting on her are still very soft. Mineral makeups are very sheer. So you can build color by layering, which you're always going to have a, a very um, a light look because it's typically a sheer makeup. When you're wearing eye makeup, you want the eye makeup to enhance your eyes. So what you're looking at is someone's eyes, not their eye makeup. Okay. okay. So basically what we did is we used three colors on Roseanne. We did a light color, we did a medium on the lid, and we did a slightly darker in the contour. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some liner on her. Um, I think as we, as we get a little older, a couple of things tend to fade out on our skin. One is our eyelashes get a little bit lighter and more sparse. Our coloring fades a little bit. Our lips pale out. So when you're putting makeup on, keep these things in mind, and these are what you're going to put into your skin to bring that color back to your skin. So for Roseanne, she's got pretty brown eyes. I'm going to actually line her eyes with an eyeliner to give them some more definition and make them pop. Now remember I said contrast and color? So she has brown eyes, so I'm actually going to use a dark gray to line her eyes. I don't usually recommend um, a harsh black unless maybe you're going out for the evening and going for a very dramatic look. But a soft gray is nice. It's going to give her definition, but it's not going to be too harsh around her eyes. Just close for me, please. So when you're using eyeliner, there's different kinds. Um, one of the most easy ones to use is a pencil. Women like pencils because they're easy to work with. You can smudge them um, as opposed to a liquid liner, which is a little bit more difficult. So pencil is easy to use. So I'm going to take her eyes, and you can either go from the inside out or the outside in. And I'm going to work this right into her lash line. So what this is also going to do is it's going to make her eyelashes appear even thicker. And she has nice big eyes, so I'm going to bring it pretty much all the way in. And I'm lifting it a little bit in the corners. Open please. Because you want the eye to be lifted at the end so they, again they look open. And the other thing you can do with liner, close please, is you can soften it down a little bit by smudging it. 
And you can either do that with a smudge tip or you can do it with a Q-tip. It really doesn't matter. What this does is it softens the line a little bit so you don't have as much of a contrast. Open, please. But it brings her eyes out. Do the other one, so just turn towards me. You want to make sure that you keep your eye flat. And again, try to wiggle it in as close to the lash line as you can. And lifting it out of the corner. Okay, open your boots. Okay. I'm just going to smudge this just a little bit. Okay, open please. Now, right away you can see how that brings her eyes right out and it really makes them pop. So, what you see are those beautiful brown eyes. Now, the other thing you can do to help set a liner, because sometimes what happens with pencils are easy to work with, but because they have a waxy base in them, sometimes they don't stay as long. They don't have as long wearing power as a liquid liner. But one of the tricks you can do to maintain that is to put a little shadow over the top of that to set the liner, and make it last a little bit longer. I'm going to do that in a minute. But first, I'm going to add one more color to Roseanne. Say she wanted to Maybe she was going out for the evening and she wanted something that was a little bit more dramatic. So I'm going to go one more step and I'm going to use a charcoal gray. Close. And I'm going to put it in the outside corners of her eye. Does that draw our attention to the um, outside? Uh, well, it gives it a little bit more drama because you're, you're accenting your contour a little bit more. And if your eyelids fold back a little bit when you open your eyes, which a lot of us do, uh, if you want the color to show more, you go a little bit above into the brow bone a little bit more so that the color shows when you open your eyes. And then I'd like to blend it so that you don't have any hard lines. That way everything kind of blends together so you can't really see where anything starts and stops. So that gives Rosanna just a little bit more of a dramatic look. Now, I think one of the most important things when you're doing eye makeup is lashes. And even if you have no eye makeup on your eyes and you put a little mascara on, it's going to make a huge difference. Because most of us, our lashes look better with mascara. And again, as we, oh, as we age, I was saying, our lashes tend to get lighter and a little bit more sparse. So mascara it makes a huge difference in how our eyes look. I like to use black because I think, um, unless you're extremely fair and have very blonde lashes, I think black looks good on everyone. It accentuates the lashes, which is what you want to do. Now I am using um, a Revita Lash Mascara, which is a, which I personally like. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have you look right at my shoulder, just drop your eye a little bit. And when you put mascara on, you want to take the base and you want to wiggle it up from the base of the lashes all the way up to the top. If your at lashes are tend to be grow straight or are a little shorter. You can use an eyelash curler first, which is going to make them curl up and appear a little bit longer. Okay. So when you, if, if you do the bottom of the lashes, it's kind of up to you. Um, sometimes people find that their, their mascara tends to end up down around their eyes during the day. Okay, look at my shoulder. Sometimes people have oily lids. So if that's the case, and you find that your mascara tends to travel, then maybe you don't want to line your bottom lashes. The emphasis is always on the top lid, because you always want the eyes to draw up, not down. So I usually suggest to people, if you're, not, if you're going to wear a liner on either one lid or the other, always put it on the top, as opposed to just on the bottom, because you want the eye to draw up, not down. 
Now, I'm going to just run this across Roseanne's bottom lashes. But even without the mascara on her lashes, her lashes automatically look darker because we've got the liner under there. So just look up for me, Roseanne. I'm just going to run this right along here. Just to give it a little bit of definition. Okay, good. We're going to move down the face. And I'm going to put some color into her cheeks. Remember I was saying foundation, um, what foundation does is it neutralizes the skin. It takes the um, blotchiness out of the skin and gives us a more neutral base to work with, like a canvas if you're doing a painting. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put color back into her skin by using some blush. I want to mention eye makeup does not have to match the clothing that you're wearing. A lot of times people feel they have to match their eye makeup to their clothing. Not true. You can if you want to, but you don't have to do that. Um, so the only colors that really you have to worry about when you're wearing particular color clothing would be lipstick. For example, if you had a very, very strong orange shirt on, you probably wouldn't want to wear a magenta pink lipstick because it's going to look a little bit jarring. So if you're looking about color themes for makeup, I would say think more about lips as opposed to eyes when you're coordinating your colors, when your clothing colors. So for Roseanne, I'm going to put a nice natural glow into her cheeks. Um, you want it to look like she was blushing naturally on her own. Again, this is a mineral blush. And this is a cool tone. It's got a little bit of a kind of a brownish pink, which is a natural shade. I'm just going to have Roseanne just smile for me. And when I put on the blush, I'm going to start about two finger widths from her nostril so and about underneath her iris. So you want to gently put the blush up, across. And I don't like to do straight lines so you don't end up with stripes up your face. You want to do like C's. And what that does is it just buffs it into the skin so it has a natural glow across her cheek. Again, with mineral makeup, you don't need to use a lot of it because it's very concentrated. Smile for me, please. Again, I'm going to put it two finger widths from her nostril, and just where you would naturally blush is right around the apples of your cheeks. So I'm just going to bring it right up there. Now, if you find that you have too much blush on, one of the things that you can do is take a little bit more of your foundation. Oh, just relax and go over it with the brush. And what that does is it acts as an eraser, it kind of neutralizes the color down, as opposed to trying to wipe it off. So if you ever find, oops, I think I put too much blush on, you can always go back and put a little bit of foundation over that and neutralize it out. Okay. So that's Roseanne with some, she's got beautiful cheekbones, so we're accenting her cheekbones with the blush. Very pretty. Okay, so. We've got her eyes done, we've got her cheeks done. The last thing is lips. I always do lips last because if you think about it, if you did your lips first, you might smudge it when you're working on the rest of your face. So lips are always last. Now, a lot of things with lipsticks, people find lipsticks don't last that well for them during the day. A couple of things you can do to help with lipstick is first of all, put on a lip primer. And what a lip primer does, like a lid primer, is it helps to give the lipstick a base to hold on to so that the lipsticks last better during the day. So this is a lip primer. Again, this has peptides in it, so it's not drying on the lips. I'm just going to put some of this on. So what this is doing is it's neutralizing out her lips. And what's also nice about this is if you need to cheat a little bit, you know, maybe your lips aren't exactly even or you want them to be a little bit fuller looking, this allows you to kind of redraw your lips a little bit. Roseanne has nice lips. They're nice and balanced. Okay. So basically we neutralized out her lips and put the lip primer on. I always use a lip liner when I do lipstick, and the reason why is because it defines the lip, and it also helps you correct anything that you want to even out. Sometimes people's lips are bigger on one side than the other, and a lip liner helps you fix that. I am going to use kind of a, a deep pink on Roseanne. It's called Merlot, kind of a wine color. 
which is coordinates nicely with her cheek color and also happens to look nicely with what she's wearing. So when you use a lip liner, you want to outline the lip, just like you were using a pencil and you're coloring in a coloring book. You outline, and then fill in. The reason why you fill in, because again, it gives you additional color on your lips, so if your lipstick starts to fade during the day, you still have a base of color there, and it also gives you extended wearability with your lipstick. It gives it another layer. I like to suggest that um, women, as I think probably like brown lipsticks or very, very neutral lipsticks, as we get older, isn't as complimentary on the skin because they tend to make us look washed out. So we want to have a little bit of color and vibrancy. So by putting a little bit more color on your lips, it makes your skin look more vibrant. It just relax. Okay. Now, you can, with a liner, you can just do a liner with a little gloss over it, or we can add a lipstick to it. And I'm going to put a lipstick over this. And again, this is kind of a mauve tone lipstick. When I use lipstick, I always like to use a lip brush. And the reason is, is it allows you to get in the corners of the lips and gives you more control. Especially when your lipstick starts to get low in the tube and it flattens out, it's very difficult to put the lipstick on. So this allows you to dig way down, even when the lipstick's hardly anything left, you're still able to use it. So again, you want to use a stiff brush, a uh, nylon brush, to hold the color. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going right over that lip liner with the lipstick. This is a creamy lipstick, which is great if you have drier lips, which a lot of us have this time of year. Now, if your lips have some more, are more lined, or if you want them to appear a little fuller, another trick you can do is you can shine them up. So whenever you put on anything light reflective, it appears bigger to the naked eye. So when you put on a shimmer over a lipstick, it's going to make them look fuller. And it's also going to hide any imperfections in your lips. So I am going to put a gloss over that. And I'm primarily going to put the gloss in the center of her lips because this is the part that you want to look plump. So I'm going to gloss that up. The lip automatically looks a little bit fuller. The other trick you can do is you can take a lighter shade of lipstick in the center of your lips, go over it in the center with a little lighter shade, which also tends to make them look fuller too. Okay, so. Now, I'm going to set the makeup. Uh, mineral makeup is somewhat water resistant, so if you actually had mineral makeup on your hand and you sprayed a little water on it, it would actually beat up. And what it does is it works with the natural oils in your skin during the day, so it's got great wearability. You put it on in the morning and it lasts all day. But what you can do also is you can set it with a little mineral spray. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just spritz her. Just close your eyes. Now that's going to set her makeup. And it's also great to use during the day if you're feeling dry. If you're working in a building where you have a lot of dry heat, your skin's feeling dry and dehydrated, you can give yourself a little spritz and it helps to hydrate your skin and will not mess up your makeup. And you're done. Thanks, Lisa. Yes. you enjoyed today's demonstration about makeup. I hope you may be able to pick up a few tips that you can use on your own makeup. And if you would have any questions, you'd like to stop in the salon. My salon is at 44 Front Street in Ashland. Or you can email me with any questions at skinsmartsalon.com or give me a call at 508-881-1180.